the female lays over 100 eggs on a, on a pine, uh, pine needle. Uh, the caterpillars hatch in late October, November. They start feeding on pine needles. And eventually, when they are fully grown, usually around about uh, late February, March, all these caterpillars will form a line, come down the tree trunk and look for a nice uh, soft earth to pupate. Back in August, the, the moth hatches again and the whole cycle resumes. And the problem with these uh, caterpillars is that they got a very urticant uh, hairs which will cause a rash in, in your skin. They can affect pets like dogs. Dogs will go sniffing along the ground and breathe in and inhale these uh, irritant uh, hairs and that can uh, cause uh, breathing problems. The last few years have been uh, very mild. We've had very mild winters, uh, very little rain and uh, it seems that the uh, population of these uh, moths have increased uh, substantially around the gardens. But the, the moth is not harmful at all. They don't have the irritant hairs. It's only the caterpillars that will affect uh, both humans and pets. So we notice that they seem to travel in this single file in a procession. W what is the purpose of this and how long can this line get? Well, they can form these lines for two to three meters long sometimes. They're just uh, following the, the leader, basically. So what would your word of warning be to those who might encounter the pine processionary caterpillar and how long can we expect to have them here for? Keep your children and your pets uh, away from the vicinity of pine trees. Uh, definitely it's not the time of the year to visit the Binada Rey, which is a, a whole grove of, of pine woods there, so keep your pets and children away. Uh, by the end of April, the problem will have uh, disappeared. Is it mainly dogs that seem to be irritated by these caterpillars and why is that? Well, it can affect any species. I mean, the caterpillars are you know, not specifically aimed at dogs. It's just that dogs are more inquisitive. Often they go and they lick it, they taste it. You know, uh, and other animals aren't, aren't that daft usually. So there was a dog which had licked caterpillar, but thankfully the main damage was to the that right natural aspect of the tongue so after treatment it resolved and they didn't lose any part of the tongue. So is it only through physical contact that injuries can be incurred? It's mainly through physical contact however if there is a heavy infestation there's lots of nests then the actual the poison the irritant is actually can actually become um, aerosol spread so therefore if you're below a tree where there's lots of these nests of these caterpillars it can cause conjunctivitis you know, and irritation. So if you, if you handle something which some of these toxins and then rub your eye, you can get conjunctivitis because of that. So what kind of injuries can be incurred and what treatment do you usually administer? Well, it depends what part of the area affects. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's the mouth and the tongue, then you've got to treat very aggressive with anti-inflammatories. With a caterpillar, it causes a mass amount of vasoconstriction in the tip of the tongue. So therefore, the blood supply to the tip of the tongue gets cut off. And that causes tissue necrosis and on the tongue you've got to be very very aggressive you know intravenous therapies various treatments just to try to counteract this effect obviously if an animal actually is stupid enough to swallow it then that can cause damage down the esophagus but as i said it's unlikely to cause death